I think that traditionally um, anatomy has been uh, presented as kind of a talking head, standing up the wah, 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 like Charlie Brown's teacher. And, you know, I'm a big believer in learning styles and um, love the study of learning styles, but I also like to keep it simple. And um, there's a gentleman by the name of Jack Wolf who came up with four primary learning styles. So you have auditory, kinesthetic, tactile, and visual. And he looked at what percentage of the population of adult learners is in those, those different categories. And only 10% are auditory learners. So traditional um, anatomy and physiology instruction where someone's just standing up there talking, you're only hitting 10% of your, only 10% of the audience is actually absorbing, absorbing it. So when you bring in the three others, then you're hitting on all cylinders. And I think the anatomy in clay does that, does that very well. So your visual learners, they get to see it. Your tactile learners get to touch it. Your kinesthetic learners get to get up and move around. And everybody's getting auditory because they're here in the instruction. So you're, you're hitting on all cylinders when you're using the anatomy and clay. At first, I think they were skeptical, um, which I expected them to be. Um, and it wasn't until probably about a week or two in, I actually caught a student as I was walking down the hall. And he was talking to another classmate, and he said, I didn't think this stuff would work. I didn't think it would stick having to do the anatomy and clay and then go down to the um, anatomy lab and actually see it on the anatomage table and on the cadaver. And he said, but it, it really did. I was surprised. And so they really have made that correlation um, by visually touching the muscles and the clay and building it. They then come to the two to three dimensional surfaces to then kind of see where that goes. But before that, they didn't get that experience of really seeing what those deep muscles look like. And the kind of the process of it's not every muscle just doesn't lay on the top. There are muscles underneath. And what does that look like? And so that was really neat for me to see as an instructor. Insertion origin can be kind of difficult for students to understand, but when you're actually building it, and finding it on the mannequin, the, the proper locations. I, I just remember students seemed to get it better, they understood, and then the actions involved with it made better sense, because then they knew it was, that insertion was moving towards the origin, they, they could actually kind of visualize, well, they could visualize the movement better. And of course, we always practice movements as we were, you know, as you're building, you, you move, so. My main goal was to want to help people every day and, and to bring them back to a better place in life. And I think occupational therapy is going to be a great way to do that. So it's going to give better job satisfaction, I think, is what I was looking for. With the clay system, um, you would build the muscles from inside out. So you would start at the very deepest muscles and then work your way out to the more superficial muscles, which was very helpful to know on which ones were Deep, like where they laid in the body. So it was very helpful. We did most of the upper body. We didn't get into the lower body. Um, but yeah, we did all the, all the upper body stuff. Um, and to be honest, I thought it was not gonna be very helpful at first. <laughs> I had even told my instructor, I was like, this is ridiculous kind of. And then after I actually got into it and started seeing it, I was like, okay, I will admit it was pretty helpful <laughs> to actually hold it and see it. I mean, I can remember thinking back into practicals and stuff like, what was that muscle I built? Oh, yes. Okay. So very helpful. You can do a cadaver dissection where, and most textbooks start like that. They look at all the superficial muscles first. Um, but, and, and when you're doing a cadaver dissection, you're starting with the superficial muscles and you're in my, in my case, I'm trying to find a way to preserve it and then lay it back so that I can look at the next level and then preserve it and then lay it back so that I can continue to look at those layers. And I think it forces the mind to work in a different direction, which is really helpful for learning that now they have to start with the superficial layer and I'm sorry, they have to start with a deeper layer and then move to the superficial layer. Then we come down here and they're having to look at it a different way. We thought it would be an interesting opportunity to look at the body kind of from the inside out like like the old masters like Leonardo and Michelangelo so you know how many layers there are to the body in order to draw the exterior I think it helps to know what's underneath 
Um, they love it. <laughs> yeah, they're really pumped up about it. So it's been really cool because, yeah, I think like Lynn was talking about with her students being pretty kinesthetic, our students are very hands-on too. So it's really good for them to have the anatomy and clay to be able to feel it and see exactly where the muscles go and, and then to be able to draw it out and then look at the visuals. And so it's a good, it's a really good collaboration. The brain is a very interesting uh, thing and, and how it learns and, and how it processes. And so the fact that you can touch and get that kinesthetic feel of something and then build from there, I think really sticks with you more than just being told, which is what we did in the past. We would have a, a mannequin, a two-dimensional, and I'd say, this is the muscle. And they go, well, which one, here or here? And it's like, just here. And so they, they didn't get that real feel of this is a smaller muscle or a bigger muscle because um, they couldn't touch it and they couldn't build it and they couldn't stretch it and they couldn't, you know, place it where it really was because it was a two-dimensional mannequin that they couldn't take apart as easy as this. Have, having hands-on was helpful. Um, I, I thought we were just kind of playing with clay at first and this is not like I would rather just go read my book and study because that's how I'd taken anatomy before and that's... I did fine, um, but really it did solidify the in information that we were getting of how big these muscles are, how many attachment points they have, um, stuff like that. My parents have had health issues in the last few years, and every time I go to the hospital or a doctor's office, I almost always see one of my former students. Um, we just actually hired one of my former students to be the nurse aide coordinator for the nursing department. Uh, I just saw her this morning. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's always really kind of a cool thing to be out and about, and I've had some of my students be my caregiver as well. Um, so it's, it, it, it makes me feel good that they completed, that they were able to move on and get a good job, and they're out there doing, doing well at it.